Greetings friends, in this video we will have the final analysis of the VSP circuit and we will wrap up this session, so stay with me. As I mentioned in a previous session about testing the VSP circuit and explain the testing steps, here we will have a more detailed review. First, we need to examine the power input to the VSP circuit, which involves checking the components on the VSP circuit such as diodes, fuse, resistors, and the first transistor in the first heatsink. Then we inspect the components between the first transistor and the input of the VSP transformer. That means when we see that the power reads the transistor and there is also power at the transistor's output, we test components between the transistor and the first transformer of the VSP circuit to determine if they are working properly or not. Then we test the components after the transformer including the purple wire and the transformer itself, which is the VSP output. Next, we examine the components around the VSP output wire such as purple wire itself and related components. If they are defective, we replace them. To do this, we need to put the multimeter in the buzzer test mode and check if they are connected to the wire. If multimeter buzzer is uh, confirmed, then uh, press it to the test components. Uh, if no, and the multimeter doesn't beep, it means uh, they are not related to the VSP circuit and we don't need to do anything in this stage. And what are the signs of the circuit failure? The first thing to do is uh, to test the voltage from the purple wire when you connect the power and turn on the switch. It should give us a 5 volt output. If it shows 5 volts, it means the VSP circuit is working fine. However, it should be noted that it is about 90% functional and it's better to check components like capacitors as well. If there is a no output voltage or it significantly deviates from the 5 volts value, you need to examine all the components and the mentioned path. For example, if you replace the transistor and diode and still don't have voltage, the reason might be a faulty transformer. So you should replace it. It is also recommended to replace the optocoupler that is present before the transformer when replacing the transformer. Another approach is to check the replace the diodes after transformer if necessary. I will illustrate this further in the following. Sometimes display voltage is not exactly 5 volts. For example, it might be 4.5 volts or within the range of 4 volts. Even when connecting a power tester, the VSP circuit voltage might be indicated as a double L. In this case, there is a capacitor next to the VSP circuit transformer known as a startup capacitor. Its working voltage is 50 volts and its value is typically around 2.2 or 10 uh, microfarad. When you notice low VSP voltage, it's necessary to replace this capacitor. Also consider replacing the capacitors near the purple wire since capacitors can cause voltage drop or loss. By replacing these capacitors, the low voltage or voltage drop issue will be resolved. Here we will examine this circuit in more detail. Let's do it. When we connect the power, it passes through the fuse and then through the diode bridge and enters the capacitors. Each of these transistors branches off from the capacitors. We don't have any involvement with these uh, two switching transistors. These transistors are related to the VSP circuit from this point to the purple wire. It is VSP circuit. In the VSP circuit, voltage initially passes through this diode and then through this fuse resistor and finally enters the VSP transistor. If there is no voltage before uh, the transistor, first test this diode. Then test the resistor. If any of these uh, two components are faulty, they need to be replaced. Sometimes the voltage branching may come from this particular capacitor. So you should also test this diode. 
Finally, we test the transistor itself. For testing diodes and transistor, you must disconnect them from the circuit and test them separately. Because semiconductor components like transistors and diodes, when installed on the board, may not show accurate information. They are influenced by other components and they can lead us to wrong conclusions. After going through the mentioned steps and replacing any necessary components, we now move on to the parts after the transistor. Note that you should have the desired voltage, at least 150 volts, before the transistor and after the transistor you should have an output voltage of 50 volts. If the VSB voltage doesn't return after replacing the components, you need to check the parts between the transistor and the transformer. Here you have a capacitor and resistor and a diode. The capacitor related to the VSB circuit is the one you see. When repairing the VSB circuit, it is better to replace this capacitor as well. The important point is to use the same capacitor with the same specifications and avoid using capacitor with a different value within this range. Then it's time to test the transformer to see if it has an output voltage. If it doesn't, you need to replace it. If after going through these steps, the voltage returns to the purple wire, the VSB circuit is functioning properly. But if you still don't see the VSB voltage, you need to test the components after the transformer. We need to have an AC power at the output of the transformer. We should have at least 12 to 20 volts or even 50 volts of AC power. We need to test the components after the transformer. Here we have a large diode and a small diode. You need to test these two diodes. If there are one or two additional diodes next to the transformer, you should also test them. The failure of these diodes, especially the large and small diodes, can result in the absence of standby voltage. If you have replaced the transformer and these diodes, it is better to replace this optocoupler as well. The failure of the optocoupler can also prevent the VSB circuit from functioning properly. There is no need to test it before replacing it. One thing I need to mention is that it's possible that uh, when you test the transformer and it's working fine and you have replaced the other components, if they were faulty, you still find that the standby voltage is not present. Based on our experience in such cases, you should replace the transformer. It is possible for the transformer to perform well in the test but not function properly in a circuit. In this case, you need to replace the transformer. By doing so, the VSB voltage will definitely return and you will have the desired voltage. If you still notice voltage fluctuations even after replacing the capacitors, especially the capacitors around the purple wire, it is recommended to replace these capacitors. Capacitor failure can lead to voltage uh, leakage or voltage drops. These capacitors are associated with stabilizing the output voltage and should be replaced. In this way, your entire VSB circuit will be repaired and no further actions are required. When the purple wire shows a voltage of 5 volts, it is expected that the green wire should also have 5 volts. However, if you find that the purple wire has a positive 5 volts but the green wire doesn't, you should test the path through which power reaches the IC. This path includes these uh, two diodes, especially the Zener diode located at, it, at the input of this IC. I mean this diode. However, uh, this uh, Zener diode may be located elsewhere in this section. You should test uh, these diodes and if they are faulty, you need to replace them. If the voltage on the green wire doesn't return after replacing them, you should replace the IC because it is damaged. By following these steps, your entire VSP circuit will be aligned 
with a switching circuit and the power supply will be repaired. This concludes uh, the analysis of the USB circuit and the next session we will move on to the switching circuit. So I see you in the next session. Until then, take care. See you soon and bye-bye.